Dropping the ante in the afternoon with Talk Radio's brand new super signing, Matthew Wright on Talk Radio. Yes, indeed. This is the Matthew Wright Show sailing on the good ship Talk Radio now in partnership with Imagine Cruising. More than just a cruise, as you can find out by going to imaginecruising.co.uk. Now then, um, I know you've got a great story, Ashley, on secondhand shops. I'm going to come to that in just a minute because first, it's time to go to Curiosity Corner. So, so, what's in Curiosity Corner this week, I hear you cry? Well, I'll tell you. Lawnmowers! <laughs> Yes, indeed. After meeting stone tossers, talking sundials, exchanging phone boxes, getting stuff with a taxidermist, looking into kaleidoscopes, playing with pinball wizards, human cannibals. We even settled up with a rocking horse manufacturer. It's fair to say there is no idiosyncratic oddball activity that is too trivial for this show to cover in extraordinary depth. The subject of today's Curiosity Corner, well, it's caught the attention of some major players. I have to say we're talking Prince Charles, Princess Diana, Nicholas Parsons, Alan Titchmarsh. Joe Pasquale, OK. Uh, Brian May from Queen, uh, Roger McGough, the poet, Albert Pierpoint, Hangman, Paul O'Grady, Eric Morecambe, Richard and Judy. Why? How? I hear you ask. Well, let's turn to a man that knows. Brian Radham from Lawnmower World, which I believe Brian is uh, Britain's, if not the world's, number one lawnmower museum. Good afternoon, Brian. Oh, hi. Good hi. afternoon. Yeah, uh, Lawnmower World is Britain's biggest or Europe's biggest? Uh, I think it's the only. The only. And um, yeah, because it's uh, just a, a unique, very quintessential British attraction. Absolutely. And um, I've got so many questions because I'm quite into my old um, British motorcycles and some of the names I've seen on, on your website really excite me. But um, first of all, a little bit of background. Why a lawnmower museum, Brian? Uh, well, it was just uh, really um, the British garden machine industry. Uh, we, we made nearly all the lawnmowers in the world. We made the best ones. And sadly, we've lost such a lot of the companies. Uh, and a lot of these machines were sort of being discarded and going to lawnmower heaven. Um, <laughs> and um, so as the companies uh, went, we, we collected all the original um, patents, the blueprints, all the history. Uh, and it's just keeping a little bit of British engineering heritage alive. Now, I said there's some glorious names from British motor, well, motoring uh, mm. to mention. Um, let's pick out one of the obvious ones, Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce yeah. lawn mowers. Mm, yes. Um, they, they, uh, this was a company called Jerem and Pearson Precision Engineering, and they were made in Leicester, and they made um, some of the best lawn mowers in the world. And they also made all the aluminium castings for Rolls-Royce. Uh, and where all the garden machinery manufacturers were making their machines in cast iron yeah. and, and steel, uh, this company was making their lawnmowers in aircraft quality alloys. And um, presumably they would have run into problems during World War Two when such alloys were fairly scarce. Everyone well, wanted them for the war effort. Yeah, everything changed during the wartime. Uh, things changed. But um, eventually Rolls-Royce went on to, to buy the company and uh, carried on making mowers. But... Um, Rolls-Royce fell into bad times as well in around the 70s and um, the machines were costing so much. I mean, uh, we have one of their machines sure. that would have cost more than the price of a house. Get, get house in London? <laughs> we'll be talking a house outside I mean, how, of London. How much then? How, how much? much? How much? Uh, well, uh, on, on, on today's uh, yeah. terms, it, it, it would have cost over £50,000. For a lawn mower? I mean, no offence, but for a lawnmower? Did people well, buy these? You know, if you want the best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, I mean, they, we've got the sort of the well, biggest, the you, smallest, the uh, most expensive, the fastest. Well, Which well, is the most expensive? Uh, well, one of the Jeremy and Pearson ones would have been, uh, and it was a water-cooled one of the early water-cooled. Um, what, what sort of era? What sort of era? Uh, that's from the 1920s. So, so just how, how, so lawnmower, so can you give us a, a, a brief history of the lawnmower? When was the first lawnmower... Well, the first lawnmower would have been, uh, well, a, a gentleman called Edwin Beard Budding. He invented the lawnmower in 1830. Right. He never set out to make a lawnmower. He worked in um, a textile mill in Stroud in Gloucester. 
and uh, the mill owner got an order for some guardsmen's uniforms, uh, but he wanted the cloth to be perfectly smooth. So he asked Edwin Budding to make him a machine that cut all the tufts and the bobbly bits off the cloth. And what he invented uh, was this spinning blade over a fixed blade, and he found that it cut the grass very efficiently. What did they uh, cut grass with before lawn mowers? It would have been a scythe. Right. Um, there would have been gangs of six or eight scythesmen um, uh, cutting the grass, followed by women and children collecting it all. And it would have been a real back-breaking job. But the scythesmen, sort of the early 1800s, they were really skilled. They would get a bowling green finish from a scythe. OK, OK. So and and uh, when Edmund Brudding uh, was making his strange contraption, uh, everybody just thought he was a, just a complete lunatic and a crackpot for, for making this, this strange machine. <laughs> and he had to test it at night so nobody would see him. And then when he eventually brought it out onto the market, uh, he said, uh, gentlemen will find in using my machine an amusing and a healthy exercise. And then in little letters underneath that will also do the work of eight men. Okay. None of the gardeners liked the, the lawnmower. Because no, they didn't. There, yeah. there was going to be a good chance they were going to be out of a job. Now, um, just indulge me, if you will, Vincent. I mean, to me, HRD Vincent, the greatest motorcycle mark outside of uh, Ruff, I suppose. Mm. What, what are their lawnmowers like? Any uh, good? They, Fast? They, they made a few different um, models. Um, yes. They made a really, really good quality machine in the 1950s. And if, if you ever see a Vincent motorbike, because oh, yeah. they're some of the best motorbikes in the world, yeah. uh, they always did something innovative on, on their um, bikes against other manufacturers. Yes. And on their lawnmower, it's, it's pretty un unique, where um, the petrol tank and the handles, uh, um, the handles are the petrol tank. And it's bolted straight onto the top of the cylinder head of the engine. <laughs> well, that sounds a really safe, safe, safe way to carry petrol. And I mentioned some of the celebrity contributions that you've got to the museum. Mm. Uh, where is the museum, by the way? It's it's in sunny Southport. Sunny Southport, right? Uh, and um, although we get lots of Americans coming down, and uh, they're sort of quite confused because Southport it's not in the south. And it's not a port, and that we haven't even got a harbour, although we do have um, seven miles of beach, although sometimes the sea is a distant mirage. Oh, dear, dear, dear. So, 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 the, the celebrity lawnmowers and lawn cutting devices, what have you got from Albert Pierpoint, hangman uh, extraordinaire? Uh, we have his lawnmower. Um, hmm? uh, it, was, um, it was quite a story that comes with it, really, because um, Albert Pierpoint, he hung 400 people where he got paid £15 per execution. Uh, and his lawnmower, coincidentally, cost him £15. And we always wondered who paid for it. <laughs> and uh, you can see it, we've got it hanging up uh, in the museum at the moment. And Brian May from Queen, what have you got from him? Uh, Brian May is great. He rang up one day, said, it, it's Brian May from Queen, and would you like my old lawnmower? And he said it, it had done sterling work. Uh, he didn't want it to throw it away. Uh, and he wished it to have a happy retirement and wished the same for himself when he retired. Um, I've only got a, a Flymo. Um, are you interested in old Flymos? Um, not really. A Flymo is... It's not it, really a lawnmower, it, is it? it, it well, it's a grass cutter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hang on. I, I can't, no, you can't throw that in, that curveball, in at the end of this conversation expect to get it. What's the difference between a lawnmower and a grass cutter? A, a lawnmower uh, um, that Edwin Budding designed, uh, which has never been bettered to this day, uh, 190 years later, it will give you a perfect finish. And it cuts the, the blades of grass like scissors, so you yeah. get a clean cut. And it all cuts in one direction. Yeah. Uh, and it will have a roller, so you'll get that sort of formal striped effect. The cricket and that. Yeah, and, and, and you see them on football pitches and all that sort of thing. And the flymo, uh, it, well, it doesn't sound very British. It has a rotary blade which spins like a side, so when it, it sort of thrashes through the, the grass, so um, it, it rips the ends, so the ends will go brown. Right. And it cuts in 360 degrees, so um, cuts in all directions. So if, if you're wanting a perfect... Yeah. A formal lawn, it would be a lawnmower with a cylinder blade. Yeah. Uh, if you want him to just keep the grass like this down, even tidy, rotary, fine. Okay. 
Um, I've actually got artificial grass, which kind of negated ever having a, a lawn cutting device of any description. But I have to say, Brian, um, I, I, I'm as a fan of old engines. I can't wait to come up and poke my nose around a lawnmower world up there in Southport. Thank you very much. You'd be, you'd be uh, very welcome to visit. It's a unique experience and a cut above the rest. Aye, Yay. ding dong. That was Brian Radham, curator of Lawnmower World, today's Curiosity Corner. Talk radio, digital debate for the UK. Pick up your phone and talk radio. We'll get you talking. 